We are Cactus Wrestling. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Who's number one? It's that time of year again, folks, to find out who is number one. We have the matchups. It is all going down in 10 days from this recording, but uh, probably just a few days before uh when we actually post this video so we're gonna go through the matchups and do our predictions and previews of who are are competing in the who's number one series uh for the 23 season so uh starting at 113 pounds typically they don't do 106 pounds for whatever reason uh maybe they couldn't get anyone to commit maybe they don't care i don't know but uh 113 pounds we have paul kenny of new jersey Versus Christian Castillo of Arizona. Let's go. Um, Paul Kenny back in at it after being in our cactus spotlight. Um, guy's done everything. I mean, he's one of the most accomplished youth wrestlers of all time. Um, kid just tears it up. Most recently just won a world championship at uh, U-17s. Um, honestly, sir. Pretty much the same career path at, as Bo Bassett at this age. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he does it, who's number one, and if he follows it up with a Super 32 high school championship as well. Um, but, you know, one heck of a match. How about old is he again? He okay. is a seventh grader. I believe he's going to be an eighth grader. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's crazy. But you can't sleep on Christian Castillo, U17 world team member in 2023, U17 silver in 2022. And a Super 32 champion. Yeah, for sure. You know, Chris and Castillo repping Arizona well. Um, you know, love seeing a state like Arizona that's getting more and more attention when you have guys like RBY that hail from there as well. And also... Um, Bo Bartlett, too. I was about to say, little known fact, Bo Bartlett, because everyone thinks, oh, you know, he wrestled Pennsylvania, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's some tough, tough Arizona wrestlers out there. And uh, Chris, Christian Castillo, although he didn't do as great as he wanted to probably this year at uh, U17 Worlds, um, you know, anytime you move up a weight class, that's prone to happen. So it'll be interesting to see how these guys match up at 113. Paul Kenny coming up again from 106, really. My money's on Paul Kenny. We gave him the cactus spotlight for a reason. I think he's going to carry it on through on this one. Yeah, it seems like uh, Paul Kenny's on the trajectory where he seems more likely to, at least on paper, I think he's more likely to win this matchup. I agree. I think Paul Kenny is going to be the favorite right here. Um, no, actually, maybe not the favorite. I think Christian Castillo is the favorite. Um, but I'd like to see Paul Kenny with the upset. I think it would be awesome to see, you know, a really young guy really continue to make his mark. How old is Castillo? Is... Uh, I think he's a sophomore. Sophomore, yeah. Or go, I think maybe going into junior year. Which nowadays, of course, high school sophomores are 18 years old. <laughs> well, he can't be 18 if he's – you said – well, Maybe. He redshirted in high school. It's a thing now. <laughs> All right. 120, we have a couple of New Jersey wrestlers, Leo DeLuca versus Anthony Knox. Anthony Knox, two-time New Jersey State champion, Fargo and Super 32 champion over Bo Bassett. Tech Luke Lillidal made the U-17 World Team Trials Finals. Uh, Leo DeLuca, Fargo champion, outscored his opponent 72-1. to one. In Fargo, gave up. Hey, that's a that's a solid who's number one matchup there. I mean, I mean Knox clearly has seems to have the uh, more storied uh, resume right there, but still, Fargo champ only giving up a single point and scoring seventy two. That's 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 bonkers. <laughs> like to, to be able to pull that off, you only gave up a single point. And that's that's got to be what six, seven, eight matches at least. I think seven it was. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Leo Deluco. Leo Deluco. One of the most like kind of out of nowhere stories for Fargo is that the kid was good. You know, he had you know a name that you recognize, but no one was expecting the level of wrestling that he had. Um. At Fargo. Um. Anthony Knox. I mean, wow. Like this guy's doing it all. He won Super Thirty Two over Bo Bassett. And then he lost Super Thirty Two to Bo Bassett. One Fargo, Tech Luke Lillidal, who just took second at U20 Worlds, made the U17 World Team Trials Finals where he lost to Marcus Blaze. Marcus Blaze, who went on to win Worlds at U17. So it's not like he lost to some schmuck. 
Um, this is a guy that's going into his junior year, and boy, howdy, is he doing some damage. Um, I'm giving the edge to Anthony Knox. I agree. I think Knox is uh, more of the favorite here, and although DeLuca is a hell of a job at Fargo, I I think Knox is going to win this matchup. I have Knox as well, and Flow Wrestling did a really cool insider scoop yeah, on did. the recruitment process uh, with Anthony Knox. They kind of went through the whole process of the first day that schools could reach out. Uh, highly recommend uh, checking out that video. It's a really cool, really well done by Flow Wrestling. Uh, so Anthony Dox um, highlighted in that one. Speaking of highlights, we have another Cactus Spotlight at 126. Jordan Rainey of Kentucky versus Jax Forrest of Pennsylvania. Now before, and I know everyone's high on Jax Forrest, but Jordan Rainey, uh, two-time state champion, four-time Fargo State champion representing Kentucky. And um, I, I think this could be a lot closer than people might anticipate. Uh, yeah, this is probably one of the marquee. I mean, these are all like marquee matchups. These are all like super stuff. But like this is this could be yeah, one of the top matches of, of the, the mixes because, I mean, Jax Forrest, I mean, he's even beaten guys on the college level and, and he's only going into his sophomore year um like th th which is insane but then i mean rainy he he's uh he's he's just coming up and coming and he's making some noise too so like this is i think this is gonna be a stellar matchup between two really talented guys um i think this is gonna be like you guys are saying one of the top matches um you know jordan rainy twin brother of Jaden rainy who was at one of our cactus spotlights for Greco world championship um, you know, Jordan's a two-time back-to-back Fargo champion. That's pretty crazy. Um, oh, yeah, four-time, but in yeah. two years because he's – Yeah. Greco so and Priest. All right, 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 right. He doubled up both years. Both years he won. Um, incredible. Um, you know, everyone knows who Jax Forrest is. The guy is electric. He's must-see TV. I think this is going to be a great match. I'm really looking forward to seeing these two guys hit. I'm going, I'm going for our, our boy in the cactus spotlight with uh, Rainey pulling Ooh. what probably would be an upset. But uh, I, I, I'm going with Jax Forrest. I think it, he's more likely. I'd love to see an upset by Rainey, but uh, at the moment, I, I, I don't see it happening. Moving up to 132 pounds, we have Kyler Larkin, another Arizona rep. Versus Ben Devino of the state of Illinois. Shout out Illinois. Uh, no surprises. Uh, ben Devino, who won, who's number one last year, uh, won Super Thirty Two, won the Ironman, won U Seventeen World Team Trials. Uh, this guy is a stud. Tyler Larkin, yeah. though, Fargo champion, seven and zero, uh, in route to a gold medal with five techs. Yep, Kyler Larkin, an up-and-coming guy. Ben DeVino, the kind of, you know, proven top dog. Um, I think this is a matchup that will feature, you know, some really top wrestling. Ben DeVino, again, coming up in weight. It'll be interesting. Kyler Larkin, like I said, is – he's good. He's very good. Um, I think that he's not necessarily favored, though, in this matchup against a guy like Ben DeVino who's kind of been there, done that for who's number one. Right, he's he's been number one before, and looking to become number one once again. He is number one. I I have him being number one again as well. Uh, yeah, I don't see Davino losing this matchup, despite Larkin's pedigree. I agree. I think this is Ben Davino's. So one thirty eight, Bo Bassett, household name at this point, Pennsylvania versus Daniel Zapita of California. Um, state California state champion, not an easy thing to do by any any means. Fargo finalist, but uh, I think Bo Bass is just on a different level. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I'm excited to see for this is Bo Bassett's weight gain. I mean, Bo was two years ago, he was you know 48 kilos, he wrestled 106 at Super 32. Last year, he wrestled 113 at Super 32, one you know. 20 ish, you know, for the um, for U17, 57 kilos for U20, 
you know, 125 pounds. And now we're seeing what you gained another 12 pounds. I mean, I, I think the biggest story here is can Bo for as talented as he is overcome all the weight gain he's had. Anyone that knows gaining weight rapidly in wrestling makes it very tough to keep being successful. And I think on paper, he's the, you know, the clear favorite here as far as career, but it'll be interesting to see a guy that's actually like a true 138 That's pretty tested at this weight class, but I'm going to go with Bo. I don't think he'll have an issue with the weight gain. He's probably still growing. He's a high schooler. Um, yeah, when you're, just hitting growth spurt, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when you're wrestling college level guys and competing at that level, I I, I get it. Twelve pounds can make a difference. Well, but I mean, one thirteen. This time last year he was one thirteen, and then the year before that he was one hundred six. Yeah, but he's you got to think he's probably cutting down to one thirteen though. So yeah, naturally. Yeah. I mean, who knows if he's cutting down to to this weight class this year? Uh, yeah. for one thing. <laughs> That'd be pretty crazy if he was. You know, part of the reason why Bo Bassett didn't wrestle at Fargo this year is that he was trying to gain weight and he didn't uh, want it. Yep. So a lot of people were wondering, you know, why does he jacks Forrest only and not Bo? Um, especially when Bishop McCourt sent so many guys for, you know, for Team PA. And everyone's like, you know, what happened to Bo? What happened to Bo? And he was going to sit back and not wrestle at Fargo regardless because he was focusing on weight gain. Um, but then, like right before Fargo, he uh, he broke his finger or his hand anyway. Um, so it's like, oh, you know, double down that he wasn't going to go because he was just training with these guys still. Yeah. Um. So you know, it's interesting to see you know how he's going to look. This is his first big competition since then. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's going to be Bo for the win. I think so too. Uh, Bo's just too dynamic. He's got such a high motor. I think that he's just going to wear guys down and just tack them. Maybe not in this match, but just, you know, I think he's just got a high motor. He just attack, attack, attack. I mean, that'd be crazy if he got a tech at who's number one. <laughs> it would be pretty crazy. <laughs> that'd be that'd be bonkers. Well, 145, we have a, a wrestling family member, Pearson Manville. People may remember Mason Manville was a, a Penn State guy. Uh, he's from Pennsylvania, from State College, actually. Uh, and yet, where's he going to college? ASU, baby, Arizona State. That's a, that's a surprise there. Good <laughs> yeah. pickup for the Sun Devils. He'll really be up surprising. against Colin Rath. So Pearson Manville swept, uh, swept the Elite Eight duels, Journeyman World Classic and Ultimate duels, sixth at the U-20 U.S. Open, third at Fargo's, 10-0 at the NHSCA duels, and 7-0 at the Junior duels. Colin Rath has beaten Pearson Manville two out of three times, including <laughs> the Escape the Rock and the Pennsylvania State Finals. So these guys uh, know each other very well. It's going to be a oh, yeah. very interesting. Can Manville one. make one. it two and two, or can it, is uh, Rath going to extend this? Uh... It'll be interesting. Um, so both times Manville lost, it was like a two point differential. Um, watching their match last year at the PA State Finals, um, I'd have to watch it again. But I just remember there was a bit of some a bit of controversy to it. Um, you know, Manville was a returning state champion. Rath was a returning state champion, and they met. And um, you know, it's interesting to see Pearson Manville finally seems to be growing. I feel like he's been wrestling 138 for a long time. Happy to see him up at 145. I'm gonna go for Manville. I actually was going to Manville as well. Um, oh, I, I'm the I'm the lone going with Wrath. I think Wrath is a uh, is uh, going for a th win number three here. I think Manville is like a classic like hard hat kind of guy where he's just, hey, there's a tournament. I don't care what it is, I'm wrestling in it, and he's he competes everywhere. This is a guy that constantly wrestling, constantly, and not just folk style, but freestyle Greco. I mean, he's an M two guy. Um. You know, he's got the best coaches. He's constantly wrestling. He's constantly doing everything he needs to. Um, I'm not going to make a prediction for the P, you know, PIAA state finals this year, but I could see Pearson Manville beating Rath at, at who's number one. Okay. Yeah, that, that's definitely one to, to circle on, um, on the matchup oh, yeah. list. All right, 160, Joe Seeley of Pennsylvania versus Will Hankel of New Jersey. Formerly Connecticut. Formerly Connecticut, so shout out uh, Will Henkel. I bet your parents' address is Connecticut. It still <laughs> is. Is he Blair? He goes to Blair? 
Yeah, yeah his, like, him and his sister both go there now. Yeah. Uh, so Joe Steely, U17 world champ, national prep champ, Powerade champ, and he's uh, committed to Penn State. I was gonna say I'm still I'm just amazed how much I see Will Hen- Will Henkel's dad around town still just constantly always seeing him at tournaments still. Well, he'll be at who's number one? Yes, will he Henkel, will. Fargo champ, national prep finalist, Ironman finalist, uh, and in this matchup, he beat Joe Seeley at the U20 World Team Trials. Yep. So this is, this is gonna be an interesting one. Yeah, on paper, it seems like Henkel might be favored. Well, U20, the World Team Trial, I mean, I'm assuming that's freestyle. And, the, and yep. yeah. who's number one is folk style rules. So right, yep, yep. Yeah. That could so, be a big game changer. Joe Seeley also wrestled last year at who's number one, getting majored by Mr. Ferrari, Mr. Angelo Ferrari. Oh, um, who's that so, Okay. Yep, so he's been here to who's number one before. Um He's won a world championship in freestyle. He's won a prep national title. Um, you know, he's a very talented wrestler, but Will kind of beating him at his best game of freestyle was very interesting. Um, it was a close match. I believe it was 9-7. Someone out there in the comments test my memory. Hopefully I'm right at that. Um, it was kind of it was a back and forth match, very close. Um, but like we always say, you know, freestyle and, and folk style. Different styles. It's interesting to see how they carry over. Um, you know, Joe Seeley getting majored last year by Angelo Ferrari at who's number one doesn't bode well for him for this year's who's number one. Um, but I think I'm going to give Joe the advantage. I think that, uh, you know, he, maybe he's made the changes he's needed. Um, he's wrestled Will before, pretty recently, actually, at U20 World Team Trials. And maybe let's not – I'm not going to put too much weight on the freestyle credential here, but – if he if he loses to Will, I, I wouldn't be too surprised. Um, you know, Will's making big strides, constantly improving. Um, and the only guy that's really kind of put the screws to Will was PJ Duke. Yeah, I, I think um, I, I'm going to go for uh, Hankel in this one. Oh, interesting. Uh, I, I actually think I'm going to go with Seeley. He, he seems to... You know, champ, champ, champ. Henkel, I mean, he has a champ in there, but he makes the finals. Uh, I think uh, I think with the switch to folk style in this matchup and with Seeley probably having a chip on his shoulder wanting to get revenge on that law. At 170 pounds, we have Ty East of Colorado versus Angelo Ferrari of Texas. We just talked about Ferrari a little bit. Uh, Ty East. She's had title third at Super 32 and fourth at Ironman. Uh, and Ferrari, as we just mentioned, won uh, who's number one last year and is the number one recruit in the class of 2024. Uh, by the way, Colorado has been, I think, on the rise in terms of top talent in the past few years. Obviously, everyone knows Andrea Alirez is from Colorado. Guess who also, guess what heavyweight is also from Colorado? Anyone know? Um, Wyatt Hendrickson? No, good guess. But Colton Schultz grew up in Colorado. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, I, I you know, I'd love to see Colorado uh, on the rise for wrestling. Um, I don't think he'll beat Ferrari, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ferrari's got to see, win Nice the, to see a Colorado rise. Yeah, this is, this is a tall task. I mean, Angelo's the number one recruit in the class of 2024. Um that's a tough guy to beat, especially a guy that won who's number one last year. Um, so for those of you guys that might remember, this was a bracket for who's number one. They had a four-man uh, bracket, and Angelo beat both guys, including majoring former world champion Joe Seeley in the finals. Uh, that's wild. That's, you know, and Joe Seeley is back again. So it just speaks to the, the you know, the quality of him as, a, as an opponent against Angelo, and Angelo took him apart. Yeah, um, I I would dare say this might be the most lopsided, you know, one sided match. Um, it just seems like Angelo's bringing too much firepower to this match, and uh, you know, I'm I'm expecting some Ferrari shenanigans, some sort of flex or, you know, prop something that they you know crowd engagement. I uh, I just can't <laughs> wait for this one. He's gonna he's gonna have a hawk fly yeah. onto oh. his his uh 
hand or, or the something. Hawkeye. Hawkeye. <laughs> They're going to roll out a squat rack onto the mat. He's going to just do some bench press with it, and then that will be his celebration. He's going to have Terry Brand's face on his chest. <laughs> rip, rip open a singlet with an Iowa tattoo underneath. We're going into our, our last two weight classes, 195, Aiden Sinclair of Wisconsin versus Connor Mirasola of Wisconsin. Battle of uh, of Wisconsin here. Aiden Sinclair, Super 32 finalist, U17 World Team Trials winner. He beat Mirasola at the AWA duels last October. And uh, for those who don't know, Mirasola, Penn State commit, along with his tw- twin brother, Took fifth at the U.S. Open, second co- consecutive year as, as a Fargo champion, uh, and went seven and zero, seventy one and zero at Fargo. It didn't give up a point. Wow. Um, teched his way through. Teched his way Amazing. through. So very impressive. Sinclair might have the edge because uh, he's beaten him before, but anything could happen. At who's number one? I'm super excited for this. Um, what's super cool about this is that they're actually. Um, practice room partners. So they, they, both, really? they both wrestle for the Askren Wrestling Academy. Um, so they they both know each other incredibly well. Um, you know, Aiden Sinclair edged out uh, Mirasola by you know a late takedown at um, at the AWA duels when they wrestled in October. And both guys have just elevated their game since there. I mean, Aiden made a world team. Connor was the number one guy for the uh, 195 pound weight class. So he's looking to defend his title. Um, he worked his way through Fargo easily. Um, I just think this is going to be a great matchup. And it just shows that, like, hey, man, like some of these Wisconsin guys can really throw down. I'm going with Connor Mirasola, Penn State, baby. Of course. <laughs> yep. I, I, if you're Mirasola's twin brother, it's like, do you switch spots with him? Or <laughs> like, <laughs> like I want, I want to wrestle. Um, but uh, speaking of twins, I mean, oh, Mike, who, who are you saying? Oh, I was gonna, I'm gonna pick Sinclair. I think he'll he'll uh, edge him out for the second time. Extend the the streak here from one to two. I'm I'm going with Mirasola. Um, speaking of twins, we have another set of twins. Um, Cody Merrill at 220, yeah. uh, California rep versus Sawyer Bartlett of Florida. Cody Merrill won four to four against Bartlett at the two twenty twenty two U seventeen U S Open Greco, um, four to four in a Greco match. Interesting. He's also a two time Fargo champion. Sawyer Bartlett won one to one against Merrill at the twenty twenty two U seventeen U S Open freestyle. So these guys really like tying. Well, guess what? There are no ties in folk style, and that is why it's the best style of wrestling. Uh, no, that's a debate for another video. But uh, he's also a Fargo champion in Greco. So uh, interesting matchup here at 220. I'm kind of salty about this matchup. I was really looking forward to seeing Cole Mirasola versus Cody Merrill. Um, you know, Cole, obviously twin brother of Connor made his way to the Fargo finals where he lost to Cody Merrill. Um, but Cole is still, as of the rankings, the number one 220 in the nation. Um, Sawyer is like number 11, I think. Um, and Cody, because he was injured and the last time he wrestled was 195, has really not been super high in the rankings because this is his first time wrestling at 220. And he took a, about a year off. Um so I was looking forward to seeing a Cody Merrow versus Cole Mirasola rematch. Um, this time in folk style, but I'll settle for a Sawyer Bartlett Cody Merrow ch- um, you know, match. <laughs> that being said, I'm gonna go with Cody Merrill. Um freestyling carries over pretty well to um to folk style. And although he lost the last freestyle matchup, he did just beat Cole Mirasola at Fargo. Um, and that's a lot of neutral. So I'm going to say that Cody Merrill's got the game, got the advantage in neutral. I, I have Merrill winning as well, but what, what I really would like to see is a double twin tag team match of some sort. Yep. Did you just have <laughs> the two sets of twins go at it? They're all the same weight. Right. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Have a four man bracket. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> see who comes out. But yeah, I think Cody Merrill is going to beat Sawyer. So there you guys have it. Uh, who's number one? We're excited to to watch and, and see how yeah. this all shakes out. Drop a comment down below. What are your predictions? Who do, who do you think is, is going to be number one? Any snubs or um, or any, any of your favorite wrestlers uh, competing? Drop it all down in the comments down below. And make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future Cactus Wrestling videos. Thanks for watching. We are Cactus Wrestling, and we'll see you next time on our next video.